the original Avatar movie was re-released on a so-called remastered 3D Blu-ray disc. But how does it differ from the original release and other Blu-ray releases of it? Let's get into that because there's a lot of speculation, some outright assertions, but let's, let's look at the facts. First off, uh, Avatar was re-released before its sequel to theaters in a remastered version. Um, so the way it was released on 3D Blu-ray, let's see how that differs. First of all, obviously it's not going to be Ultra HD or high frame rate because neither of those things are currently the way 3D movies on Blu-ray are released in a compatible codec, especially the high frame rate. 48 frames per second, not compatible with current screens. So first of all, let's just take a look at the packaging. Um, uh, the original Avatar Blu-ray 3D was a Panasonic exclusive. It was a pretty much bare bones, single disc release. that contained the theatrical cut of the film. And interestingly, the disc face image on the inside is the same image used for the deep, the Blu-ray cover of the re-release. The re-release has a nice sheen on the slip cover. It's a three disc set, you've got the uh, standard Blu-ray, the Blu-ray 3D. It isn't split across two discs, just one. And a Blu-ray for the bonus material. Now, I imported uh, both Blu-rays onto my hard drive so that I could more easily compare them. And interestingly, an interesting note, the title of the Avatar disc, the original one, was uh, Red Bird. And um, I, I don't know how they, if they use this as a working title or, or some other way to hide the fact what movie it was on this disc, but um, obviously referring to the, the creatures from the movie. So anyway, like I said, I ripped them both to the hard drive. I was able to compare them in my 3D video editing software one above the other in anaglyph mode, which is key to uh, comparing the 3D quality as well, and the timing. And speaking of timing, uh, it's identical for the majority of the film. In fact, all the way up until that small added scene at the, towards the end, it's to the frame identical. So um, while I was at it, I thought I'd put together a little comparison shot of that scene that was expanded towards the end of the movie that sort of set up the sequel, um, one above the other. You'll have to exclude, excuse, there's a slight missynchronization that occurred after ripping. I'm not sure how that happened, but it's a slight glitch, but it's, it's still watchable. to their dying world. Only a few were chosen to stay. Okay. My way. You know this isn't over. Sorrow was ending. Turuk Makto was no longer needed. So yeah, that's as far as extra content in the remastered version. That's pretty much it. Uh, except for just a slight difference in the credits. That's about it. And obviously the opening logo. Um, it's no longer 20th Century Fox, a news corporation company. Now it's 20th Century Studios. There was also uh, one correction very early on in the movie that uh, 
was inverted 3D in the original release, the close-up of the eye, and uh, the 3D was switched to fix it in the remastered version. But what about image quality and 3D quality? Let's get into that, but first I'm getting in the car because I'm, my hands, I can't feel them right now, so yeah, a little bit of a wind chill as the sun sets. So, was this movie remastered from all the original elements to be in uh, Ultra HD and high frame rate? Well, no, and I don't believe the original computer graphic elements were uh, re-rendered in a native 4K either, it's just an upscale, basically. And the parts that are noticeably sharper, because sharper, it's not the entire thing that is, but the parts that are had to do with pixel placement, I believe. And I'll tell you why, and I'll show you examples. First of all, when there's purely CG shots like these, you'll notice when it switches from the theatrical cut to the new remastered Blu-ray, there's really no real difference here. Other than extremely slight change in color grading and uh, artificial sharpness added but the difference is almost indistinguishable. And some live action shots as well are virtually indistinguishable apart from sharpening. However, some live action shots, which I'm gonna show you, not only increase in real detail, but also the positioning slightly changes. You'll notice, for instance, here's the theatrical cut, and then here is the remastered version. And you'll notice when it switched to remastered, it was just ever so slightly zoomed in. So this movie was filmed in 1080p on digital cameras. So it's not going to be rescanned in 4K or anything like that. It's 1080p forever. But I'm thinking it's possible that um, they were filmed in 2K, which is a version of 1080p for a cinematic standard that's ever so slightly wider in pixel resolution. So it looks like for those shots, the original Blu-ray did not have a one-to-one -one, uh, pixel ratio. So it included the entire picture, but with the result of uh, image degradation, a slight blur to the entire thing. However, the remastered Blu-ray very slightly crops the sides, but appears to include a one-to-one -one pixel mapping so you get the full original detail and it could said to, could said to be remastered but you're, what you're really getting is the original quality and here's uh, other example shots of that taking place And also in this shot, an interesting thing to note is that um, the stereo window placement was very slightly adjusted. It's, it's not even worth mentioning, just of interest. In the original version, uh, the wheelchair was slightly more out in front of the screen towards you, and it's just pushed back a tiny bit, a tiny bit in the remastered version. Um, maybe there are other slight stereo window adjustments throughout, but none that I noticed. Um, if you did, please uh, comment below. But otherwise, the 3D is the same. I actually have uh, heard people say that um, the 3D was stronger in the remastered version. Of course, that's not true, because like I said, it's, it's not like it was ever gonna be re-rendered from original elements, and that's the only way to get stronger 3D because all 3D is, is a left and right eye view. Those filmed with a native camera, obviously they're stuck that way forever, unless they reconvert it. And like I said earlier, going throughout both movies uh, next to each other in anaglyph preview mode confirms that the 3D is identical. And stereo window placement is not the same as more or less 3D. That's a common misunderstanding. The amount of 3D in an image is baked in. It can only be adjusted forward and backward 
virtually by aligning the foreground, the background, or anything in the middle. So as the sun sets today, I'll leave you with that and see you next time.